Good morning to everybody. Thanks for joining. My name is Matt Wiles. I'm Head of Operations here at InfoServe. And your title tag appears at the search results at the top left. There's your title tag. Um, that is where um, the, the homepage title tag appears on Google. Now you can change your title tag. Everybody can change their title tag. It's very quick and easy to do. Um, but essentially in the title tag, what you need to have is your main keyword and then main location. So the example here is, the example here is pretty good. Chiropractors in Wakefield. And then I would have secondary keyword and secondary location. So for example, chiropractic clinic, West Yorkshire. That's what I would probably have in, in my title tag. And the reason why I'd have West Yorkshire in there, because I know that people type Wakefield, but they also might type, type Wake West, West Yorkshire in there as well. The category on your, on your business listing. So I'm zooming in here and I can see on home style interiors, they've got the category as interior designer Hartlepool. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So I'm going to give you a huge tip now, which will mass hopefully, hopefully boost um, boost your, your Google listing position. If you look at the top of your website, um, the window of your browser, um, on the window of your browser, you'll have a tab that's open. But effectively, what we're going to do is show you that you need to match the main category on your Google My Business listing to the title tag on your website. When it comes to people looking for your business, the majority of people do it on, uh, on the search engine, um, but 25% of people check maps. So um, I hope everyone's aware that people are searching for you just on maps. And that might be, might be Google Maps, of course. It might be Bing Maps, et cetera. But maps, 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 you know, people are going directly to maps and searching for your business. Okay, so um, people are looking um, primarily when it comes to your business. They're looking uh, for directions, and these are the uh, and this is when they're looking for a local business. So for, for if you have a local business, they're specifically most of the time looking for directions and opening hours. Okay, so uh, I mean, in fact, it says there nearly a third of mobile searches are related to location. So you know that says it all. That's a lot of mobile searches. So a third of people doing a search on a mobile phone. It's related to a location, local business, etc. So the first thing I just wanted to ask everyone is, have you made sure that your directions, your address is up to date and correct? I mean, this is all part of local SEO. You have to make sure that this is absolutely 100% correct. The directions, um, your opening hours, have you updated them? Because those are the top two things that people are looking for when they're looking for local businesses. I do it all the time. I am on my phone. And I'm really in a, sometimes in an absolute manic rush and I'm on Google Maps and I'm just looking to get directions and I'm just looking to get opening hours just before I go and visit the business. Um, so those two elements are some of the most important things. Um, so what is a backlink? A backlink is um, something that you can do off your website, um, away from the website, and it helps with search engine optimization. In fact, it really massively helps with your Google and, and, and Bing uh, ranking. And so just to clarify that, it's a link from another website, from a website to your website or to, to another website. Uh, search engines use backlinks as a ranking signal um, because when one website links to another, it means that um, Google and Microsoft think that that content, that website is noteworthy. So um, basically search engines are looking for backlinks to your website. Um, and so first of all, what I wanted to touch on was the home page. So let's go straight in um, and let's start going a million miles an hour again, like we normally do. So looking at the home page, first of all, what is it? It needs to, it needs to explain who I am, what I do, um, and or um, what can I do? Um, what can you do? <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is as a visitor, um, I, if I'm visiting your website, I need to know what I can do on your website. You need to make sure that your homepage has an always changing design. So you, the design is, is, is ever changing. So for example, 
don't just leave your homepage for two or three years or even a year. Update it. Um, update that hero image, the, the top half of your, of your homepage. Um, refresh it every month if you can. It's important to make sure that elements on your website, important elements on your website, stand out from things that aren't so important. Okay, so you've all got a lot of information on your website, okay? And there's a lot of content, and there's a lot of buttons and a lot of calls to actions. What are the most important bits? Um, people basically look to where you want them to look. And if you want people to look at a specific line in your content, well, a tip might be like what this website's done, where they've highlighted um, exponentially grow their traffic, okay? So, wow, okay, I can exponentially grow my traffic, all right? So um, over 1 million website visitors per month. Okay, so these orange bits here are jumping out to me in their content. And that's a nice little trick that you can do with your website design and content. You can make the most important bits of a headline. Tip number three is, is adding reassurance. So there's a couple of things here that we just want to touch on quickly. It's the reviews. Have you got reviews? Have you got testimonials? Make sure your testimonials are there on your website. Now, you could have a testimonials page, but what I find even better is if at the bottom of each page, each and every page on your website, if you have rotating testimonials, you maybe, you know, one customer says, fantastic service, love it, we'll use them again. And another testimonial comes up. Make sure you have these uh, testimonials on each page of the website, or at least you have a dedicated page on your website with your customer reviews. Um, why? Because remember, 97% of uh, potential consumers, potential customers are looking for your reviews. They're looking to see, has anyone else used you? Has anyone else had your service? Has anyone else um, had an experience with your business? So make sure you've got your testimonials on your website. But yeah, we need to make sure that the forms are optimized. So how can we optimize forms? Well, there we go. So three to four fields, if you can. Three to four fields, fewer, Less is more, basically. Less is more. A single column form beats multi-column forms as well. So when I mean when I when I what I mean by single column, I mean all on one kind of row, like going down below each other, rather than having them on two columns, for example. So you've got name, email, phone number, you know, horizontal going across. Make sure if you can uh, have a single column because it just improves conversion rates. But less is more. That's the critical thing. So the fewer the fields, the more conversions you'll get. But what I want to do is um, talk about um, how you can select keywords and how you can do your keyword research. But I would encourage everyone to use this keyword planner because the keyword planner on Google allows you to find what people are looking for when it comes to your business. You, you get to see what people are searching, um, how uh, reach people who are interested in your business, people that you didn't know that were interested in your business. So I'm going to show you as a live demo in a couple of seconds how you can use the keyword planner to reach people that you didn't know. Um, now, I want, to, I want to discover what people are searching for. All I need to do is type leather boots into that, um, into that. And um, what it tells me, if, if I just scroll down, it gives me keyword ideas. And this is what I want to pay everyone's attention to. This is how many people are searching on a monthly basis. If you just see the, um, the average monthly searches are here. And, and the keyword idea is here. So I can see what people are typing into Google. And based on this information, I can then use this to build my campaign. And it's really easy. You know, if you're, if you're wanting to get, um, include some of these keywords, you simply tick them. And you can actually tick them like so. And if I just uh, tick a few like this, and I can add them to a plan. And that plan is, is, can then be used in my Google Ads campaign. And it's a quite a simple walkthrough, um, but yeah, I can add it to my plan and that will then be going into my Google Ads campaign. It's that simple. This is what this session is about, building a campaign for success. Uh, everything that we're going to, uh, to, to, to say that I'm going to, to say today 
uh, can be applied to both Google Ads and Microsoft advertising. So uh, again, three basic principles, three steps to build your campaign for success. And the first one is define your business and marketing goals. It's a bit of a higher level one, uh, but don't worry, we're going to give you and show you some tools so you can get hands on right after this webinar. You can go and, and start playing with those tools and, and start uh, 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 working on, on your marketing if, if, if you like. And um, so that is the, the basic principle. You need to define precisely your business and your marketing goals. And I'll show you again some tools that will help you with, with that. Secondly, uh, you need to uh, get the structure right. Once you jump onto Google Ads or Microsoft advertising, then you need to uh, have your marketing and business goals uh, clear. And then you need to uh, think about your campaign structure and what uh, campaign types you're going to, uh, to be using. And then thirdly, and this is a very, very important one, you do need to set up conversion tracking. What that basically is, conversions, uh, I mentioned it uh, briefly uh, earlier, uh, is basically what you want to achieve with your campaigns. That can be uh, uh, phone calls, that can be phone fields, booking, sales on your website, basically uh, sales leads, um, that which is going to get you to, to get more sales. Yeah, cool. Um, so these are just different examples of great ads that have been run in the past um, that, that did very, very well. I just wanted to talk about examples of, of why uh, they they worked. Um, so obviously this is for a Tough Mudder. Uh, it was in 2015, um, but they've used this for three years running um, after that. And obviously they've changed it up as we are uh, now in 2020. Um, but the reasons that I think this works so well is A, you've got really happy people. And as I discussed yesterday, uh, people do really engage because we're people and we want to see pictures of people doing the thing that we think that we might be doing. <laughs> um, and also it does have quite a strong color there. So orange, um, obviously it doesn't go with a lot of, of other colors uh, in nature. So it really does stand out. So uh, great statistic coming at you um, per hour if you are engaged as a, a Facebook user, you will scroll through the, the feed as tall as the Empire State Building, um, wow. which is, it, it, it's really, that's a lot of scrolling. So what the aim of your ad is to stop somebody scrolling. Some businesses focus in on the what, what is it that they do? And some of you in that chat there focused in on the what. Um, so what is it that you do? Some businesses focus in on the how. So how do you actually do that? So we offer bridesmaids dresses um, uh, with great customer service. You know, the great customer service is how we do it. But a very small portion of businesses, very few businesses, and it's only the most successful businesses, think about the why and understand their why. Why do they do it? And Apple are one of those companies that start with the why and they end with the what. So it's why, how, what. And if you look at their marketing, they mostly always start with the why. And so if we were to use that as a, as a company, InfoServe, so we're a Google Premier Partner, we can uh, save time, save time and, dry, and get a higher return on investment. Um, how we do that? is by using our Google Premier Partnership, which gives us direct access to Google themselves. Um, and, and the what is obviously that we're a Google Premier Partner. So it's almost gone back layers. So starting with the why um, gives you, give, it really demonstrates um, the benefit to the, to the end user. So only some companies do that. And it's just something to think about. And if you've not seen that, Simon Sinek, I think his name is, he does a TED talk on that. So it's defining the benefits um, by doing that, it also helps define your target audience. So that's why I wanted everyone to define their benefits so they can start to understand the target audience. Now, defining your benefits, I think you should spend time after this webinar to go through all this stuff and, and really brainstorm and think about these things and think about the messages. Um, all you need to do is go to Google Analytics. It's you know, really easy to find, but I'd recommend if you haven't got this installed on your website, 
get it installed. Um, it is so powerful. Okay, so here we go. The first thing I look at on Google um, Analytics is on the left-hand side, I would always go to audience and overview. And then when I, when I, what I want to look at here, sorry, is the graph, and it shows me um, by day, week, and month, and hour. Um, but what I tend to do personally is go to the top here and filter this, the date range. So I'll change the date range. I'm going to go back to, let's say, the beginning of March, and I just click apply. And what I can see is the peaks and troughs um, of how many people have been on this website, on my website, since, for example, the beginning of March. So it's a, it's a really useful tool to see who is visiting your website and are they new people? Are they returning people? And how long are they on my website for? The average length um, of duration. How long are they on that website for? Um, but this tool is really useful because on the left-hand side, you can then go down to things like demographics. And I can start to have a look at the type of people that are visiting my website from age group to gender. And so I can see that 25 to 34-year-olds are the biggest age group. Um, so I can really start to understand my audience. And that's Google Analytics. And if you haven't got it installed, it is really quite simple to install. Of course, if you want, to, if you want a bit of help with that, we're happy to help. Um, but it's really cool. You can start to understand um, what devices people are using. It's all here on the left-hand side. It's quite simple to, to, to go through. And you can click on each tab and you can see things like this, like what, Apple de sorry, what device are people using. And in this case, it's the Apple iPhone. Um, and, um, you know, there's uh, so much data that I've got at my fingertips it tells me that most people are on mobile phone. So most people are viewing this website on mobile phone compared to desktop, 67% almost are viewing it on mobile phone. Proof that more people are searching on mobile for this particular type of industry. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really, really helpful. So these are some of the basic tools that I'd recommend everybody um, gets going, gets installed on their website. Google My Business into into Google. Um, if you do use it often, it will come up here on the top right hand side. Um, and then once you're in here, main things that you need to do is go onto the info tab and fill out all of that information. Make sure there's nothing missing on the info tab. The more you use it, um, the better it's going to be later on down the line for getting found on Google. Um, the number one thing um, that's important when filling these out, be as accurate and be as descriptive as possible. Um, so as you noticed, um, here at the top are your categories. Now, you can put in more than one category. You can choose one primary uh, category. A little top tip to find your primary category, but a little top tip for you to find out your perfect category. All I need you to do is just open up a new tab, go into Google, um, once you're into Google, I want you to search for the search term you want to be found for. So I'm going to go to boiler installation. Here we go. This is a perfect example of an Americanized category. So I've typed in boiler installation. Now for boiler installers, that's the search term they won't want to be found for. So it's come up with a location pack, a map pack, or a Google My Business pack. There's multiple ways of saying that, but it comes up with the, with the location. So you see you've got three preferred businesses that Google have pulled up there. Notice how I've typed in boiler installation, but yet the category is showing essential heating service. If I click onto there, it will then show me that it's actually heating contractor. So there's three different ways for saying boiler installation in Google's eyes. You've got boiler installation, you've got central heating service, and then heating contractor. So what I would then recommend to a customer that is with InfoServe um, and they are choosing their category, I would say put your main category as heating contractor, even though we're after boiler installation. The reason being is because the main category here is heating contractor and they came up first on Google. I would replicate what your competitors are doing and what's working well for them. So as we've come up with two categories there, which is heating contractor and central heating service. So all I do is I go back into the categories and I'll change this to heating contractor. There we go. Um, so that's a little top tip for you there. 
But again, just to make sure all of this information is filled out to the best of your abilities. So Search Console, you can do a number of things on, on Search Console. Um, it is a really, really useful tool. Um, so um, you can optim optimize your website content, uh, content with the search analytics. Um, what I mean by that, you can have a look at the pages uh, which are best performing in terms of impressions and clicks. Um, and you can even kind of track your position on Google on here as well. Um, so one thing that I find really useful um, is having to look to see um, the the change um, in kind of uh, devices and kind of see how many more people are kind of using a device compared to um, another one, for instance. A nice little nifty trick that you can do is you can click on devices, you can have a look at your clicks and impressions. Um, and again, these change depending on what you click. If I click on click through rate, it will show me my click through rate. So all click through rate means is, is your total impressions uh, divided by the amount of clicks that you get. And that's your click through rate. How many people have seen it and how many people have actually clicked on it depends on your, your click-through rate. And you can also show your average position. Um, again, this is some really, really valuable information. So if I was to go into queries, for instance, I can see for kind of InfoServe, our click-through rate is 9.7, um, which is a fairly good, good click-through rate that we've got there. Um, one thing I would like to kind of highlight, um, especially kind of with using this, is the compare. So what you can do is you can actually compare between like previous 28 days or previous three months compared to the previous period.